In this video, we consider the nature and type of risk that exists in organisations and approaches to risk management. This is a very broad topic and is almost a subject in its own right. We'll therefore restrict our discussion here to what is examinable in the F9 paper. First of all, let's distinguish between risk and uncertainty. Risk concerns known possibilities or outcomes and known or estimable probabilities. The benefit is that we can therefore do some calculations to help us assess the risk. For example, the risk associated with tossing a coin. There are two possible outcomes, heads or tails, and a 50-50 chance of each. With uncertainty, either some of the probabilities are not known, or potentially some of the possible outcomes are not known or maybe a mixture of the two. When starting out on a new venture, you may have no real idea how likely it is to be successful. This is uncertainty. Although this distinction may be important for a multiple choice question in your exam, the terms risk and uncertainty are often used interchangeably in everyday language. Strictly speaking, risk can be upside or downside. Upside risk is the chance that something good might happen, as opposed to downside risk, which is the chance that something bad might happen. That said, the word risk often has a negative connotation associated with it, so it's often taken to mean the negative or downside. It's worth noting that risk management is not the same as risk minimization. At some point, a company's investors decided to invest in the company which implies taking a risk with the hope of making a return. Inherently then, business cannot be about simply minimising risk. This would imply never setting up in business in the first place. That said, risk must be managed to make sure that risk that is purely downside is eliminated where possible and the remaining risk is managed to a level that's acceptable to investors. Different decision makers may have a different attitude to risk. A risk averse decision maker focuses on the downside and makes the decision that ensures the downside is the best it can possibly be. It's an inherently pessimistic outlook as the risk averse decision maker is assuming downside will occur. A risk seeking decision maker will consider potential upside and choose options where that upside is high. This is an inherently optimistic view, as it doesn't consider the downside risk may result. The risk-neutral decision maker will make their decision based on the balance of probabilities, without focusing particularly on positive or negative outcomes. Risk comes in various different guises, and many frameworks are available to distinguish between different types of risk that the company may face. Simpler frameworks may consider, for example, strategic, financial and operational risk. Other frameworks can become much more complex. There are also frameworks to assist an organisation with managing the risks that they identify. However, this is a topic that is examinable elsewhere. There are two particular aspects of risk and risk management that our examiner focuses on. Foreign currency risk and interest rate risk. In the remainder of this video, we'll examine the nature of this risk. We'll consider how managing this risk can be undertaken in other videos. First of all, foreign currency risk. Foreign currency risk includes the way we are financially affected as a result of movements in exchange rates. An exchange rate is simply the price of one currency in terms of another. So, for example, an exchange rate may move from $1 to £1 to $1.30 to £1. This would mean that anyone who exports from the USA to the UK used to get $1 for every pound of export revenue, whereas they are now getting $1.30 for every pound of export revenue. Foreign currency risk can be one of three types. Translation risk, transaction risk and economic risk. Suppose we are based in the USA and we sell something to someone in the UK. 
if we give our UK customer three months credit and we're invoicing them in sterling, we don't know how many dollars that sterling is going to be worth when they pay in three months time. That's because the exchange rate will move between now and then in a way that we can't predict with any certainty. This is known as transaction risk. It directly affects the cash flows of the business. We will end up with more or less dollars as a result of transaction risk. Now, suppose we have a financial reporting deadline, such as the year end, one month after we make the initial sale. At the year end, we will have a foreign currency receivable on our statement of financial position, being the amount that our UK customer owes us at that point. This receivable would need to be retranslated at the exchange rate prevailing at year end, and any movement between the point of sale and the year end in that exchange rate will therefore result in a profit or loss due to foreign exchange. This is known as translation risk and will affect reported profits. Although exchange rates fluctuate constantly, they often follow a long-term trend that's consistent with the changing economic circumstances of the two countries in question. These long-term trends can fundamentally affect the value of our business. For example, if we constantly make sales to the UK from America, then the value of each individual sale will go up or go down in value depending on the direction of the exchange rate movement at the time. However, over time, there may be a long-term trend, which means fundamentally the value of my business gradually increases or decreases because of that direction of movement. This is known as economic risk. We may face economic risk even if we don't sell overseas, as it may affect our input costs or our competitors' pricing. Interest rate risk is an increase or decrease in our profitability due to movements in interest rates. A simple example of this is a company with a variable rate loan. If that variable rate increases, interest payments will increase. If the variable rate falls, then interest costs will fall. Gap exposure occurs if the company has a different amount of interest bearing assets and liabilities. The net exposure will generate an impact on profit when interest rates move. Basis risk occurs when interest bearing assets and liabilities vary with reference to a different interest rate source. For example, interest rates on savings that are based on LIBOR, the London Interbank Offered Rate, may move at different times or by different amounts to liabilities that may be based on, say, Euribor, the European equivalent of LIBOR. Again, this means that company profits will be exposed as the interest rates move at different times or by different amounts. In summary, risk is essential in business, but it needs to be managed to maximise returns for a controlled level of risk. Risk management is a large subject area, however, our examiner only touches on a relatively small part of risk management, essentially interest rate risk and foreign currency risk.